Hey folks, today I have your full review of the Jim Reel Momentum X1 rocker plate system. Uh, so now, the piece that I'm reviewing here is this entire board contraption along with the whole front end. The trainer that's on here is just a standard Wahoo Kicker core, that's not part of this. So the X1 is a motion platform. The idea behind this being to add motion while you're riding on the indoor trainer, which in turn reduces fatigue, especially for the longer indoor trainer ride. Now in the case of the X1, it's got four different directions of motion, which is more than most rocker plates typically have. Uh, the first direction is it can go front and back, so it can go you know, four and a half like that. The second is that like most rocker plates, it can tilt side to side. So I don't have any body weight on it yet, but I'll show you in just a second. Uh, the third is that it can actually go laterally side to side. And so you can see this right here. If I slide it, it's kind of moving side to side. It's a bit tricky to see until I get on it and apply body weight. And the fourth motion direction is that it makes like a rotational S out of it. So as I rotate my handlebars during a sprint or something like that, you'll see the entire thing like make a little S Thing. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's a little bit different, a little bit crazy, but sometimes you need that little bit of crazy to be different. Now, starting off with the unboxing side of things, uh, it came in two different boxes. The first one is the plate itself, just the plate though, so nothing else, just that piece of wood there. Uh, and the second is a box with all the other parts. So in that main box, there is the entire front section, which basically just folds out the legs, super easy. And then you stick this little pole on top that your fork will eventually snap into. It comes with a couple different axle adapters, depending on what your particular bike has on it. Meanwhile, on the backside, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So you've got a skateboard that's included in that box. You flip over the wooden plate, though I think actually either side is correct, but either way, you flip it over just to make yourself feel better, and then you're gonna attach that skateboard into the center of the wooden plate. Now in this case, there are no pre-drilled screw holes, so you do have to do that yourself uh, with just a screwdriver using the sharper screws they provided. No big deal, but I'd like to see those like at least markings on there so I know I had it in exactly the right spot. Be kind of handy. The next piece is to flip it over this time for reels because you've got the wheels on the bottom of the entire plate and you're going to go ahead and get your trainer situated onto it. Uh, the company says they support all the major smart trainers out there so Tax and Wahoo and Saris and Elite and basically they have a giant list on their site and in fact they say if you have a trainer that somehow doesn't fit this to go ahead and contact them and they'll just make it work somehow. Also they say not to put rollers on it. I thought that would be kind of obvious that you wouldn't try to put rollers on top of this whole crazy contraption but you know, people do stupid things with indoor bikes all the time. So there you go. Anyways, once you've got your trainer on it and leveled off, then you're gonna go ahead and add these brackets. Now with the brackets is just like before, you gotta take the screwdriver along with the sharp screws that go into the board. Whereas most other rocker plates these days have kind of pre-cut holes and those holes will ultimately hold the strap. So in this case, you've got the brackets that go onto the wood, take the straps and put them on top of your trainer. Again, you have to have some sort of strap system for your trainer. Otherwise with all that like rocking and rolling, you're gonna basically just move your trainer off the rocker plate and then you're just into like a fail plate, which is equally funny for most of your friends to watch, but not so much for you or your bike. So with all that set up, you're gonna go and toss your bike on it. I presume you know how to put a bike on a trainer. Like if you've got this far in the video, I think that's probably a pretty straightforward thing. And then you get on it yourself. And this is where things get a little bit spicy the first couple times you do it, uh, because there is a lot of different kind of degrees of movement. You're gonna go ahead and basically just kind of apply some weight into the middle so that hopefully you don't tip over and then you're on it. It's not too bad, you know, to get used to, but uh, it does take at least a, a couple rides to get going there. So at this point is I'm just pedaling kind of nice and stable right here. You'll notice that for the most part, you're seeing a little bit of movement on the back, depending on what I do. If I just wiggle my butt like this, then it wiggles down there too. I've kind of nicknamed this the wiggle wiggle plate because it wiggles everywhere. It's worthwhile noting there's two different spring options you can buy. Uh, in the case of this one, they sent me to try out the lesser tension spring. So that means that it's gonna have more wiggle movement, but they've also got a version that you can get with the higher tension springs, uh, probably more for riders like myself that are a little bit taller, bigger, whatever the case is. Uh, so it's not quite as much wiggle, but uh, something to keep in mind when you're watching this video that I am on the more wiggle version as opposed to the less wiggle version. So with that said, if I go ahead and just kind of like tilt side to side here, it's a bit tricky to tilt without showing you other things, but if I tilt, you can see that it's tilting the entire rocker platform in the back there, pretty normal. Um, but what it's doing with that is also when I tilt, you'll see my handlebars automatically rotate because there is rotation on the front there, which will be important for later on in just a second. And hey, a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, now's a good time to whack that like button. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. The next bit is I do go front and back. So if I just kind of sway like this, you can see I'm moving front and back. Again, something we've seen on the Ceres MP1 rocker plate, uh, but isn't as common in a lot of the home build ones. And then the last bit is this entire like S thing that happens as I start to increase my power here. Getting better gearing. 
So if I start going up a bit, a bit of a loose sprint, then you'll see that the entire platform kind of does this little like snake movement. And that's because I've got lateral movement up in the front here. So this actually goes side to side. There we go. And of course, that's not at all natural. Like no logical person to sit there and go like this on a trainer. It just doesn't happen. So if you see that in other reviews, they're just kind of jerking with you. But what you're looking for here is if I'm riding along, if I increase my power, get nice and stable, what does this feel like? And when you look at this, you see there's a little bit of backwards sway in the rear, which is normal because your rear tire, if you were to look behind you, is actually moving a little bit side to side. In the front, as I shift my weight, I get that movement and the rotation of the handlebars if I were to need it. Now it's worthwhile noting there's no steering support in game for Zwift today. The company says that working on that, this piece down here, that little pole right there, will essentially get swapped out with one that supports steering electronically, transmitting the apps and whatnot allow you to steer. So just kind of watch right here. Again, if I'm just pedaling along like this, relatively steady state, doing maybe an erg workout, just doing my own thing in Zwift, you can see just that slight bit of movement. If I go ahead and I add a little bit of power to this, nothing like a sprint quite yet. You can see a bit more movement on the back, as well as laterally side to side. And then if I go into a full blown sprint, <coughs> Okay, a half blown sprint. And then you'll see obviously a bit more movement. The gearing, I'm better than the gearing this this time around. Okay, time for one more little sprint here. Oh, I'm exhausted today. Not happening. And the thing is that I need to catch my breath before I continue. Okay, so a couple thoughts on movement of this one compared to others and, and all that kind of stuff. So if you talk about like the directions of motion, right? So in the case of the gym rail unit versus something like the Sarah's MP1, which is a bit cheaper, it's about $1,000, $1,200, 1,000 euros on sale right now. It's been on sale forever at this point. Versus this, if I would include VAT, it's 1,700 euros. Uh, so for here in the Netherlands, I think it's like 1,380 or so for the unit without VAT, but VAT, 1700 bucks. So with that, you're getting four different kind of motion directions. I'd say a solid three motion directions, and the fourth one is absolutely there, but I'm not sure if I would declare that, that S movement as like a motion direction. It's there though, it's valid, and so whatever. Versus on the Ceres MP1, you've got front and back, and you've got the side to side motion, which is, is great. It's, it's very, very functional, and thus you're spending less. You're spending $700, 700 euros, whatever it may be, less than a thousand bucks. Then you get to kind of the next group of rocker plates that are like 300-ish to 800-ish, depending on availability and stock and sales and all that kind of stuff. And in those ones, you typically just have left and right movement, the tilting movement, if you will, of tilting left and right. And, and that's pretty good in the vast majority of cases. And then you get to plenty of different homemade or like pseudo homemade options uh, that may have it just in the back, but not in the front of your bike. Uh, and those are, you know, $300 all the way down to like five bucks for a couple tennis balls to toss on this. Uh, and in all of those cases, in every single one of those from super high end to reasonably cheap, you know, tennis balls, you're gonna get some movement. And the core idea behind this movement is to go ahead and basically trick your butt and your core to moving around just slightly on the trainer. So you see, as I'm just doing this right here, I'm moving just very, very slightly between this. And over the course of a longer workout, a longer, like a multi-hour trainer workout, you're gonna feel that movement. Now, as you increase it, your price point from $5 all the way up to 1,700 euros or whatever, in that case, you can add in more degrees of movement and thus more potential realism. Now, of course, once we talk realism, then we get to the question of, does this simulate outdoors? And, and that's trickier because virtually no rocker plate or any rocker plates that I know of today properly simulate the direction of movement that you should be going when you put one leg down. And that's because they're locked into a trainer. And thus, unlike outdoors, there is no gravity here. So I'm not having to counterbalance that my weight to the opposite direction. Does that matter to me? No, not really. If I'm outdoors, there are so many other aspects of that ride that is different than indoors that this just doesn't really bother me to be going the wrong direction like every other rocker plate. Some people go ahead and try to like counterbalance for that or fix that or basically learn to have a different form indoors on a rocker plate than outside. Personally, that's just not my cup of tea. I don't really see a a reason to do that. Uh, it doesn't really bother me because I'm not doing a ton of sprints. If you were sprinting like 
30 times a day on this thing, then maybe you would want to do that and work on your form. But in my case, I don't sprint that many times because I'm mostly doing more steady state workouts indoors as opposed to just constant sprints, like all out sprints. For surge and stuff like that, you won't typically kind of get in that position. So overall, what do I think about this? Well, I actually like it. I think the price is bonkers crazy, but I think if we set the price aside and hope they can sort that out, you should sort that out, Jim Rail, by the way. Uh, then in this case, I like the feel of this. It feels, as I said in my written review, it feels a bit spicy. Like when I get on this, I don't really ever know exactly which way it's going to twist or rotate or feel. It just, it feels different versus a normal rocker plate. It's, you know, I'm going to go left and right. Like I know that's going to happen. And the Saris MP1, I'm going to go left and right and forward and back. But with this, with the rotation and the whole like S thing back there like this, you never quite know when you're riding along, when you add that acceleration, what precisely it's gonna do. And so it always feels a little bit different, just kind of like riding out on the road. You know what it should do, and it generally does what it should do, but it just feels, it feels like, like they said on the website, it feels a bit more natural um, to use one of their cliche marketing terms. And if I compare all the rocker plates out there, this one feels the most alive compared to everyone else for what that is worth. Anyways, hope you found this video interesting or useful. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or something like that. Or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology stuff. There is a bunch of cycling stuff coming up over the next little while here with the Tour de France and Eurobike. All the things are happening over the next couple weeks. You're not going to want to miss it. With that, have a good one.